all right hello youtube welcome to <laughs> this new video now i decided to make this as a as a automation game tutorial we're gonna uh, just go through constructing a basic car that will work and drive nicely and be mg now a few disclaimers of course uh, now i'm not a pro in this game i and i don't know uh, all the technical nuances of uh, of making a car and an engine but uh, I at least somewhat uh, somewhat somewhat understand them and also I can maybe explain how they affect the game and the performance if not uh, the principles of how they work and also you can maybe tell that English is not uh, actually my first language so yeah uh, pardon me for any any hesitation or or when I don't know what to say or <laughs> I say something uh, incorrectly so yeah whatever okay so let's get into it so if you you know, if you're new to the game i i hope th th this will help you so this is the welcome screen of course before you delve into campaign and maybe challenges which are challenges are good for learning but uh, before that i guess it's <laughs> of course tutorials as well but before that i guess it's best to go to sandbox and just mess around for a while now let me just delete this one yeah and let me also delete this one yeah, don't so this is our car, car manager as you can see this is a list of the cars you are have available now i have made some cars before of course and some engines with them now so to our first car i think it's a good idea to make uh, not a race car right away but uh, maybe some premium premium sedan uh, a bit sporty, a bit on the expensive side, but not something crazy. Okay, sorry, I was, I'm back. And so yeah, right, that's what we're gonna do now. First, I like to, I like to create my engine separately to the vehicles. So yeah, let's do that. Uh, uh, that was engine manager these are some engines let's create a new one so new family of engines let it load and here we are okay now engine block so which engine block should we choose for a pre premium premium sedan a bit sporty nothing crazy well i guess we'll stay out of the v not even the v6 would be all right maybe even v8 but we're not going for this much performance so i'll just stay with inline and let's grab inline six okay as for the block material now this cho this choice basically it's a uh, cost versus uh, weight so this is the lightest second lightest third and this is the heaviest and now we don't want think some we do don't want something crazy expensive but also not cheap so we just go with alum aluminium i guess uh, i'll leave the uh, leave the cylinder as it is, three liter, six uh, six uh, cylinder engine is just fine. Head and valves. Okay, so push rods. These are the most basic. They are available like from the year, like for, for, from thirties, forties. Already in the carrier, you can use them. Overhead cam. These are the more more. Yeah, these are basically better than as today. And now, how should you choose? Well. So what do we want from our engine? We want it to be mm, mainly reliable and efficient. And the power, there will be some power because it's a six cylinder. So we don't have to worry that it will be, mm, there will be no power, uh, but mainly efficiency. So let's see. So friction. So we can assume that the friction, the efficiency is smaller but so the b this one is best but uh, 
there's it's almost double the engineering time so i would say we can just stick with this one overhead cam not single overhead cam no number of valves per cylinder all right so as you can see with more valves engineering time increases increases tooling cost increases and emissions go down now this is a premium car family car and it's twenty. Oh, I'll let me take take it to 2020 it's 2020 so let's just go with uh, as little emissions as possible I think that makes that makes sense okay head material let's go aluminum as well and we are we we will uh, this one stands for uh, variable valve something I don't know what well and uh, well, well what it means is that when you have when you when you enable it your engine or your car can in real time adjust the adjust how much will the valves open which greatly improves efficiency and potentially power okay next slide now how, how this will this will go I will now just go quickly through all these slides until I'm at the testing slide and then as, it, as, it, as the engine is finished there will actually be a huge uh, table and some charts about the engine performance and then I will go back and adjust the adjust the uh, all the slides accordingly to get a bit more performance out of it okay crankshaft well you can see forged steel and billet steel basically are the you can have more torque and more rpm with these bad materials and cast iron is the same except the yeah the torque and the rpm is slower now this is not a sports engine so let's just do cast now this cast basic heavy duty basically a lot of torque low rpm because they are heavy so you can't spin them very very fast heavy duty forged yeah that's the same but the rpm is uh, now decent lightweight forged well it's lightweight which, which means you can speed it you can spin it really fast but uh, of course it's lightweight so it's thin poss possibly so the maximum stress and the torque is uh, lower and now titanium is of course uh, well it's titanium that's a really strong and light material so it's both of us now I'll go cast again and see if I can get away with it if I can I'll just leave it then I'll do lightweight lightweight forged because in not very heavy cars the rpm is uh, mainly the concern not the torque okay pistons yeah once again uh, same idea i will cast now quality uh, you can see that the oh this is the first quality side now quality makes everything better and everything really much more expensive now if you have a budget limit you don't want to really um, adjust the quality because it gets really expensive very quickly and also I want to say that I recommend building with some restrictions so that uh, there's some form to the engine and the cars you're building you can pick a pick a some racing class or something like that otherwise otherwise it's you really I think it's much more boring when you don't have any limitations and you don't have to actually try to get as much performance within these limitations so let's uh, keep the quality at zero so that the cost is reasonable okay compression now this are now the fun sliders these are the important sliders uh, I'm actually not gonna attach them now I'm gonna just go through it and then as I said when I'm at the end and the engine is actually finished I can go back and adjust them pro uh, adequately so next one okay so do we want natural as aspirated or turbocharged well from my like natural aspirated there's really they have n not necessarily a nicer curve to the performance but they have really the curve is easier to control and you don't have to mess around with it so much to actually make a decent curve and they sound of course better or not that they sound better but the turbo doesn't sound very well so then it's just like a vacuum cleaner when you have a big turbo yeah but we will go with turbo and fuel economy this will allow us to have a much better fuel efficiency and don't lose the power with the efficiency 
next one okay fuel system carburetors or injection now it's 2020 i guess injection is or what we should should go for and we want an efficient engine so even though even though it's uh, the most expensive one the direct injection uh, gives us the best fuel efficiency and emissions compared to the others as you can see so i would go with that one now single single injection uh, basically this is a simple choice you can see that max power is uh, 275 horsepower now this is actually more than i'm aiming for i'm aiming for like 250 230 something like that per cylinder you know you can see that the just the power is pretty much uh, in the sky and we don't need as much so let's stick with single intake okay so well yeah we can stick with standard because the power will uh, it will be enough uh, flow for the power and for the fuel type i usually go with premium 95 octane because even though this is regular it's 91 octane actually in our uh, like when i where i live 95 octane is uh, is uh, the standard one okay fuel mixture let's just leave it at this for now and go back later short cast we can we don't have much uh, choice right so this uh, this is uh, you can have uh, well, well i don't remember but tuber long tuber tubular and uh, and race race headers but we can look at them later now we'll just stick with this short cast single exhaust no we don't need to bypass bypass the walls i don't really walls i don't really know what these settings uh, is in reality what it means but uh, it's just in the game it slightly increases your uh, overall performance exhaust the armature just leave it as it is for now now catalytic converter i usually go with the best one because it just really kills the emissions and let's just go so muffler if you have no muffler you have much many a lot of air, air, air flow but of course the sound is loud which when you're building a race car in like both of these things <laughs> you actually want but now we want to uh, the sound to be down but maybe not as much da as down as it is so i can afford to go straight through which will give me decent airflow and some dampening as well and maybe where uh, this is still quiet so i maybe go twice straight through okay yeah let's stick with it okay so here's our engine how it looks it does 20 uh, 210 horsepower and uh, like decent or uh, decent torque but then it gets quite low the torque okay so let's see what we can do with it <laughs> first off uh, let's uh, talk about what we actually see there so these are the overall characteristics that the game calculates and then gives you in like simplified form you can see reliability is just one number 79 this this is really really high uh, smoothness throttle response of course these are like are like arbitrary measurements but what we are looking for now is uh, of course uh, fuel efficiency we want to get this at least to 30 or i shouldn't say at least because it's really high 30 is really high so 30 let's say 30 and also we don't want to get the, rea the reliability uh, and lower than like 70 that you can consider this our our restrictions for today nice rea reliability and nice fuel efficiency all right so he this is the the torque curve and the of course the power curve this is our rpm this is the power curve is already really nice because if we want to go fast we, we will basically max out here and then we will when we shift up we the, the rpm will decrease m maybe somewhere here which means we will we will be operating between 210 and 203 horsepower which is nice okay now this stress well you, if it's all green it's good right uh, if you if you exceed the rpm which are for the cast cast 
material is uh, 8,100, 8, 7,100, so we will not exceed that. Uh, knocking, we will talk about it later. Wall float, well, I can show you that. If I just go and I just... Okay, well, that's, mo that's more too much. Okay, if I just uh, take the RPM all the way up, you know, it makes no sense with this engine because, well, why would we want to be there? You can see that basically <laughs> the piston breaks, the crankshaft breaks, the corner also breaks, and the wall float is uh, wall float <laughs> also is present at 100%. So yeah, we want to avoid that. Let's get it back to 580. Now, the next important table is the flow. This chart shows us what and how restricts the flow of air through our engine. Now we can see that the exhaust is in the red, which means we it really we really have small exhaust for this engine. So I'll just go to exhaust, exhaust diameter, and just increase it. Yeah, and you can see that our uh, horsepower has just jumped up. Uh, how much? 23 horsepower. That's that's not um, and the and the torque curve also smoothed it out a bit. Okay. And what we are doing 26 efficiency now okay so now that we are not not uh, restricted by the exhaust i'm actually now and the power is decent i'm now gonna focus on the fuel efficiency so what can we do to increase fuel efficiency fuel system fuel mixture if you run the fuel mixture really lean you can uh, potentially <laughs> much better fuel efficiency as you can see so let's just do that all the way down okay so yeah the power didn't drop and uh, didn't that much uh, even though the torque curve isn't nice well well it's not too bad because it's in low rpms and 230 horsepower still that's good and really good fuel efficiency already what we can do as also is uh, advance the ignition timing so that's ignition ignition timing of course is if you are going to uh, ignite the fuel fuel air mixture a bit earlier or a bit uh, so, uh, later so let's try that Okay, so you can see that as we reach 84, that's actually just the most of uh, we can get out of it. We have really nice fuel efficiency, this is really good. And uh, and the horsepower as well, it went up, so really, really nice. Okay, so now we can all look again at this and see that the turbine and the compressor is restricting the airflow. Now, so what we can do, of course, <laughs> to get, have this green, which sh sound like we want that, we can increase the diameters or the size of the turbine and compressor. Now, the problem is that th that this will uh, increase the power nicely, but the fuel efficiency will really go down. So let me try it. I'm gonna make sure that the both of them are in green. So let's say this is in green and compressor now is in green, and you see fuel efficiency 25, which is still decent like for a, for a, for some light sports car that uh, still isn't like a race car but but uh, also want to be a bit fast uh, this is should be this is, would be this decent fuel efficiency but we want to be as efficient as possible so let me take this down uh, Okay. Okay, so I was able to even though the it's only two thirty horsepower now we have actually thirty two fuel efficiency. It might be one of the best fuel efficiency that I ever got. Okay. <laughs> now we well profile. Let's try to mess with this one a bit. 
I don't know how should I explain this. That's basically just uh, some profile that alters how the adjusting the opening of the walls work. Uh, I don't know that much about it. Cam profile. Okay, so cam profile you can really really as you can see more high high rpm performance or better low rpm performance you can really adjust the curves with cam profile and there is also a lot of potential fuel efficiency to be found so if i just tried it a bit yeah it seems like we already are aware the sweet spot which is 37 and that's 32.7 efficiency and basically same power now compression Okay, so now there's knocking. You can see if as I increase it, the engine just is dead. So how is that? Let's go to stress. Knocking is at 100%. Now what is knocking? Well, basically, as the piston or as the as the cylinder block is uh, open and the fuel mixture comes in, then the piston start starts squishing the fuel mixture which actually how much compression occurs is ba is that's that's the slider that we are adjusting that and now if the, if the compression is too high the fuel air mixture starts igniting way too, too early which means that even that way before the engine is the way before the piston is at the top of the cylinder the fuel air mixture is already igniting and the pressure that builds up uh, due to the ignition of course push pushes hard against the piston which means it, it just kills the performance so you want no knocking whatsoever and you can of course get rid of the top knocking uh, by compression so let's just lower it a bit yeah nice okay and well basically it should be it we have 230 horsepower which is uh, well that's not a lot yeah. That's that's not not much for even for a premium or somewhat premium family car, but the fuel efficiency is really nice. So I I would like to stick with that. I would imagine that maybe 280 horsepower would be more more appropriate, but let's uh, stick with that. So let's hear it. Yeah. Also also uh, sorry. Let's decrease the RPM now. Why would we decrease the RPM? Well now. You can we max out at 228 horsepower and 280 newton meters and now we shift to the next gear the rpm decreases right here and we are at 224 and uh, 356 newton meters now that's not bad but what we can we can do better we can for example start start here and or start here and, and here and uh, when we operate in this region even though the horsepower starts to decrease a bit, so we have to be aware of that, but overall the torque is much better. So I guess that this region is better. So let me just reduce it, like maybe so this much. So we are going from here to here when we are shifting. That's a, that's a bit better. All right, uh, let's hear it then. see that the turbo kicks in kicks at two above just above 200 rpm which is quite good because if we are if we want to go fast we can easily stay above that in this region and now a bit more like this okay that should be better okay let's save it uh, we let's call it inline 6 3.0 liter the family and the variant is well, we do 231 horsepower at 370 newton meters, and it's efficiency built. I'd like to have some 
system in the naming so i guess this goes s manual safe now okay okay that's the engine let's go back now we hit car manager and we of course want new car so new model all right let's 2020 so for the body type uh, I said we we will do a sedan, so yeah, let's, let's do sedan. Maybe we could go a hatchback as well. I I I'll, I'll see how they look. Okay, we need the game to love the design designs. Okay, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically something like that. I think this this looks just fine. Oh, yeah. Well. But uh, but I must say I I think there's a bug or something. If the model has mirrors on it already you see that the others don't then you can't color them or at least i don't know how and i don't even know how to remove them so the fault may be on my side but i don't know why this have mirrors and the other don't so yeah let's just stay away from that and instead take the yeah well that this is almost the same one so let's take this one okay here we are so panel material now it's the same logic as before the better more down the better and more expensive and usually lighter so this should be decent like a bit more on the expensive side premium car so we can even do aluminium or partial aluminium which is uh, which is uh, some aluminum, some steel. Now which really is heavier. So I think I'll go with aluminum chassis type. Okay, leather. This is a really old one. You want to stay away from that. That's uh, <laughs> or you know if you don't have a choice, if it's like 1941, then okay, or 1948 something because I don't know where this game starts exactly after the war. So yeah, uh, <laughs> 1948 or something like that. So, uh, monocoque, monocoque, okay, <laughs> well basically this is one, s one, w one piece of welded uh, blade and this is the most standard, uh, it's not really for pre premium cars, I think for pre premium cars you can get with semi-space frame, this is combination of the monocoque and uh, this one, which is, uh, this is really cheap really heavy and really stiff uh, and also not very safe frame so let's go with semi space frame a uh, light truck well basically that's for the truck because there's the platform like this right okay chases material well we can go on with aluminium so let's go with that engine placement now you can compare the sliders uh, but uh, I think it would make sense for this type of car to have front transfers front suspension okay so max person strut that's basic suspension you would find on most standard and cheaper cars double wishbone this is comfortable I think I d I'm not sure in if in real world actually this suspension is used for uh, classic cars but nevertheless here it makes sense because it's not it's uh, it's more comfortable and overall better and now uh, yeah so solid excel so this is, this is of course for heavy duty trucks and also it's a uh, all the suspension so let's go with double wishbone rear suspension now we would go with double wishbone which more as well and uh, the multilink and push rod well multilink you can you maybe fi may find familiar it's uh, the like classic race car suspension and push rod uh, you that's the same also ra for race car so we we'll stick with double wishbone next one okay select the engine okay so we have the engine done so select existing variant we have inline 6 3.0 3.3 fuel efficiency that's really good Let's load it up. Now select the chassis or the body. So yeah, we go with this one. 
I guess that's just fine. Next. Now, do we want to mold the body in a way? Well, I would like to make this a bit sharper. So maybe like that. Maybe the front. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. And mm, I'm also gonna make the hips a bit wider. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, in the uh, f future videos I want to convert this uh, family car into into a GT car or at least a sports car, which means I need some room for the for the wheels to have nice and uh, thick wheels. Okay, how about the pain? Well, let's just go like this. Okay, that's I think that's a bit decent. Okay. Fixtures. Okay, so it's time to actually make the car look like a car. Uh, so I'm not gonna spend much time on this. So it's gonna be quick. Most of these have no, no performance impact. Only you need grills for cooling, and you need spoilers, wings, and lips for aerodynamics performance. Headlights, right? Let's pick this one. Let's take this one. I like these ones. Let's just stick like this, a bit of a rebugger. Alright, that's too much. That might be fine. Now we take... Uh, okay, we're gonna sneak a lip in there, because... Uh, I want it to, to have at least some downforce. Yeah, I think this one is appropriate. It looks nice. What else? Well, we will go grills. I'll take this one. So and a uh, small one just there. Yeah, that, mo oh, <laughs> that looks quite nice actually. Maybe it's too aggressive, I don't know. Well, we will stack a number plate on it because this one is actually, where is it? Here, let's put it here. Nice. All right. Miscellaneous. Mm. <laughs> yeah, let's just put like A right here. Okay, we need, of course, some mirrors, something like this, just small one, <laughs> not that small, I mean. <laughs> All right, door handles, let's take this one, it's us. Looking nice. Okay. Now this is shift and drag. Okay. How about indicators? How about this one? Just like that. All right. Tail lights. Now, since the front is so aggressive, I think I will go with something like that as well. Just not so angry. Maybe like this. All right. Yeah, well, it doesn't look too good, but yeah, not, let's not 
spend too much time here. Number plate, right? Right here. Now, do we have a lip that would fit here? Maybe like this one, if I make it sm smaller. Yeah, I think that looks alright. That looks alright, so exhaust. Now we have only, ooh, yeah, so just one exhaust like that. A bit bigger, so it's seen nice. Wait, no, we don't have any. This it's automatic, isn't it? All right. All right. What about the? Is there a nice wing? Something really small? No, it's not this one. Mm, maybe this one. Does it? No, it looks bad. All right. Okay, it well, it shouldn't really have a wing, but uh, it will have. No, actually, we we don't need it. We can get the downforce a different way. All right, so I think that's done. I think it's look decent. It's really aggressive. And yeah, let's leave it at that. Next one. Okay, drive train. So, premium SU uh, premium sedan. Do we want all wheel or we yeah okay we want all wheel all wheel drive i thought maybe re rear wheel but since the engine is at fr in front or i don't know why exactly we don't have it cannot have so let's do all wheel gearbox advanced automatic now the difference between automatic and advanced automatic will be basically to our concerns uh, if we want to drive in bmng the automatic the only automatic is really bad. You want to use advanced automatic and BMG. Let's go six ratios. Top speed. Well, what does it mean? Well, that this means that it adjusts the it adjusts the final drive so that this speed is the maximum maximally or po the maximum potential high, uh, speed is this one, like on the gear six. On our max RPM, we will going this this fast. So I'll leave it at 240, probably because we don't have very strong engine. Spacing. This is uh, This is basically the profile of the ratios. It's sacrificing acceleration in the in the low speed a for acceleration in the high speed or otherwise. Differentials. So let's go with. Uh, Okay, so I don't really know how differentials, uh, how how which differential makes sense, but I guess I won't go for the cheapest ones. Cheapest one, I will go for some comfort. Okay, this one, it's uh, significantly cheaper than the others, and it's uh, nice. Power distribution, well, that's of course power distribution between front and rear. Now I will go for. Uh, 70 rear because i want to avoid wheel spin or no wheel spin not wheel spin i mean uh, over steer, uh, under steering right and yeah yeah under steering i want to avoid under steering next one tire radio we go mediums uh, basically these are off-road these are cheap these are standard these are sports which mean low comfort but and drivability but good sportiness and these are of course uh, race race trucks uh, completely flat tires okay now we want a bit wider tires of course width of tires that basically you are 
it's uh, the wider, the heavier, but the wider, the better grip. And we need at least some grip, so I'll go with well, something like that. I think that this looks quite decent. And I will offset it a bit, so it's not too much in the... So, so it's it's not so deep in the body. Let's go like this. All right. Tire diameter. Now I'm gonna just make it a bit bigger. So it uh, looks nicer. Okay. Let's go with this one. Rim material now. Well, we don't need anything fancy, but we can go uh, with alloy. I think this is not supposed to be cheap car. What is this? Brakes. Now, brakes are important because, uh, well, if you have non-functioning brakes, then in BMG you will just not be happy how the car behaves. So let's go went the discs. That means that uh, they are still like standard brakes, but they are uh, well. They have better cooling, and we go front so let's go four and three in the back it's same with the engine I just go through it and they jump and then I go back uh, as uh, when I can actually see this, the performance bad type well yeah well let's just leave it you can just balance the comfort with sportiness that's all because the if you have full race, then you really need just small, small brakes, and they will brake just as well. Brake bias. Let me just get it a bit down. Uh, on the tray. Okay, so now we have can have downforce. Now I think it's not real. It is not really realistic. You, this car in real life would have probably have like full clad just fully it's not seen here seen here but full clad means that the, the, the under the car it's sealed with like a plastic uh, sheet fully it, which really helps with uh, air aerodynamics but we, i will go downforce so i can actually generate some downforce even though i don't have the wing at the back yeah and i'll yeah okay uh, another thing I will say before I'll uh, go, I go down, I want cooling flaps, and I want the brake airflow to be at 100. Now, this is not necessarily necessary, but basically, as I said, you want your brakes to be just braking reliably because uh, y even though it's not a race car, we will g we will be going around the racetrack, and that if the brakes <laughs> are giving up. Then uh, yeah, we <laughs> that just it's just pain. You want them to be braking nicely. Also, cooling airflow. Now you can. You, it's always set that the cooling capacity, as you can see, matches the required cooling. However, we don't need it. We don't need as much cooling capacity. We can lower it, and uh, it will still work just fine, and it will give us better top speed. Now you can see that now we have this <laughs> problem here, so I'm just, what I'm gonna do, it started at 50, I'm gonna lower it to 41, and now actually it's not here. You see? Like, I would actually lower it all the way to like 10, but since I don't want to, this to bother us, so let's just get uh, 41, and that's good. Next one. Seats, well this one, that's well, that's, uh, that's obvious, that's uh, just for... Uh, this this affects the the stats that actually matter only in the game. They don't matter when you are actually racing the or driving the car in the BMG. So what would make sense if for premium and premium infotainment, for example, with race cars you have of course go basic and none because they weigh something. You want and you also get rid of the seats with ba with race cars. So this would this would make sense for this car, I guess. Next one power steering once again for a for a premium car i think electric variable makes sense and a asc and uh launch no, launch control no right so it's just asc electric uh, stabilization control something like that i don't know exactly now safety uh well well i i think it makes sense once again to go with best safety the 
Gark in a fog. Okay, springs. Now what do we want? We want decent comfort, which would be air. But I can I think we can go with active sports. It's not too much it's like it's expensive, but it's not that much expensive that air already. So yeah, let's go active comfort. Dampers. So yeah. Yeah, so this 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 time let's not get the best one. Now this popped up, but I will finish this and then I'll look at this. So presets. We'll go with comfort, but now uh, well no, let's just go with comfort, I will address it later. Ride height. Now this is always set up way too high. Or maybe it's just my to my 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 thing that I think it's way too high, but let's lower it a bit. Okay, now we're done. So, what is this? Well, these numbers represent... They are arbitrary... Like, they are arbitrarily calculated uh, statistics. That doesn't really mean, like, some real-life... real-life... real-life uh, uh, real uh, characteristics. It just it re this really matters in the game, but of course if something is uh, alarmingly low or alarmingly high, uh, you <laughs> have to do something with the car, of course. Uh, so w what we can take from this is, uh, for example, that fuel economy is 9.4 liters, which is quite high. Well, the car isn't isn't light, but that's quite high. I thought it would be lower, like at least eight. Well, whatever. And these are once again for the carrier. We don't want bother with them with these again, or now. And uh, well, now this is important, and also this is important. So let's just fix the problems that uh, came up as we finish the car. So the front brake force is slow compared to the grip. Consider increasing, and the rear. Yeah, and the, okay. So it always pops up. If you don't don't uh, adjust the brakes before you finish the car, it's always low. So let's look at this graph. Now we have red lines for the front and, and the blue lines for the rear, right? So the dotted line is uh, represents our grip at different speeds, and <laughs> you can see that this is really not ideal because as we speed up, the grip actually gets smaller. Now this is not good, of course, because uh, because we want it to be exactly the other way, but what, what we actually, what we definitely want is to the braking force to be higher than the grip that the wheels can provide us, so that when we brake fully, it actually the wheels are or the brakes are capable to transfer this braking force to the to the like to the tarmac. Yeah, this is actually quite nice and just uh, front brake so it's this one let's go six piston and let's increase it a bit as well and i actually go two piston here and increase it so this maybe this seems nice we will have to adjust it we will because we will mess with aer aerodynamics which will mess with the dotted line but now so far it's it's uh, just fine so what's the next problem Chosen power distribution seems ineffective. Okay, well, yeah, well, what it, this means is that is that this would be, as you can see, uh, much cheaper, uh, much um, much uh, less uh, weight, and also the acceleration curve is actually better. So, I mean, this definitely is true. The acceleration will be better, it will be about quite a bit cheaper and quite a bit lighter, but you know, this is all wheel drive, which means that's, that the, 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 the advantage that doesn't show there, show, is, isn't shown there, is that you will you will probably have a lot of uh, understeer 
with front wheel life only which once again wouldn't really matter but because this is not a race car but uh, yeah we will actually go drive with it quite aggressively and also well if you are going uh, some off-road then as the car is as the road is bumpy and the car jumps around it actually you can feel that if you have only front or only wheel on only on a rear wheel drive that sometimes uh, as the wheels don't make contact with the road it just <laughs> it doesn't respond to, to, to the throttle right so i i say i stick with the all wheel for now and power distribution is one it, it uh, re was reset so i let me get it down uh, to write that all right okay aerodynamics so what do we do well we basically increase the downforce now i'm not sure but i think that this downforce with this under tray it basically works uh, using the ground effect right even though it's uh, it maybe wouldn't be very <laughs> very plausible with car like this because the ride is still quite high but uh, yeah I think that's that's the principle it means to represent uh, like uh, the ground effect so that's why you don't need any wings and actually you can generate uh, generate uh, aerodynamic uh, downforce at both uh, ends now we also have a front wing or the lip which we want because we want to have more downforce at the front than at the back so yeah let me just turn this to 100 now we have <laughs> nice okay now now we have downforce uh at both at both uh, ends but this is quite unbalanced so let me just uh all right no i guess uh, i thought the blue was front so i had have to go more 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 and yeah uh, so you can see here the yellow line represents the behavior of the car at different speeds when turning and you can see that as we go fast and we turn the the car will tend to understeer quite a bit at 150 already or maybe even less so we need to push the front tires to the ground and gain some grip so that's that's why actually we are going to do that and you can see as i as i slide this up this slowly rises up. I'm not gonna probably save it much. Yeah, but I'm gonna just do that. That's better than before. Now, when when building a race car, this like this is crucial. Okay, when you are building a race car, you need to have a you have to have the the yellow line right in between and in between and between and then at the end it will it will either go right up or right down but you have to have it as long in between as as possible and that's really crucial when building a race car now it's even though it would be nice and i could i could actually balance it but uh, with some more fixtures but uh, let's uh, leave it like this for now okay you can see that now the, br the the braking actually slightly increases over time this which is good or is it yeah and let me just increase the brakes slightly as again okay so here we have the graph steering fast you can see it's from 0 to 200 kilometers per, per hour and here uh, we have steering slow and well <laughs> we have slight slight oversteer right and i'm not really sure i don't really know how to fix that you can just uh, put a huge tires on and that will help but otherwise i don't really know how to fix that okay what problem does so the power distribution rewrite frequency is low okay so i select comfort right which is nice we want comfort comfort but that's the comfort setting is that's like really really uh soft springs and dampers so even though we want comfort i will increase the stiffness just a bit okay and it's still actually low so yeah that fixed it 
Okay, the rear brake force is high compared to the grip. Oh really? Well, I mean it is high. And since yes, yeah, so and this is not a sports car, so I guess we don't actually need. That's yeah, we can leave it like that. All right, now brake fade. How to deal with brake fade? Well, we can make small pistons and make it larger. That's what we're gonna do. Like this. This is gonna get heavier and less expensive actually. Oh, that's a big difference. Okay. Yeah, you can see that the problem with the brake fades. Now, brake fade is really important. You don't want the brake fade. Because, uh, again, <laughs> it's the same point. When you are driving around and the brakes will overheat and they will fail, then, uh, yeah, you are done driving, basically. Nice, so what do we have? 1900 kilograms. That's still not very <laughs> heavy, actually, for, for uh, well, it's not luxury, but for a decent car. Top speed. Well, that this is slow. Wow, I should have put a, or I should have put a bigger, large motor in there. Well, whatever. Quite nice cornering, actually. Um, for the seven thousand uh, dollars, yeah, that's the price I was imagining. Nine point nine fuel economy. Oh, that's bad actually. Hmm. Okay, let me lower this a bit. Because of course, this gives us downfalls, but it also ca causes drag to occur. So yeah. Well, it didn't help. Yeah, it didn't help. Let's keep it. Keep it up. Oh, all right. Alright, so I guess that's all actually. Let's uh, export it to the BMG. So yeah, let's uh, name it first. So we are of course gonna name it uh, B1 <laughs> because it's prototype and uh, this is the trim is it's the f it's the efficient like family yeah it's the fa family variant the other variant will be the gt car or sports car at least now save it export it now what here when you are exporting is good thing to check and <laughs> the uh, ride height because uh, <laughs> yeah otherwise we will just have it ridiculously high i think this this is too high actually window it's okay i th i will lower it because we will drive around on on a track tracks so just a uh, little bit down should be fine all right yeah yeah i'll leave it like that and now the tire nice to co uh, is corresponding to the okay all right let's hit export now now if you do not want if you do not know how to export it or how does it work just uh, you know just uh, find some tutorial it's really easy like the games are well well put together so that uh, it, it pretty much works without any any settings just right away it works at least for me it worked like that so now we are done and i will meet you in the BMG, where we will take it on uh, three different tracks. We will go on the on the automation test track. We will go drag racing, and then we will go on a small island on a like it's not rally because there will be mostly asphalt, but uh, like s like uh, bumpy and uh, small road around the island. So let's go. All right, so welcome to the BMNG. This is how the car uh, turns up. It uh, it looks really nice, I think. Uh, the all the fixtures uh, are all right. 
now the color is a bit darker and uh, dim it's uh, always like that like there's a big huge difference in the color between the preview and the automation and the BMG <laughs> also I forgot to put some uh, nicer wheels so yeah we are driving, driving these ones well whatever uh, so I will not talk at all basically during the driving because I have to <laughs> well I have to focus on the driving and let me just adjust the camera just like this because I, I'm used to driving like that so yeah let's see how the car does <laughs> so it's really easy uh, to, to handle the car it's because well it's underpowered a bit and it's four-wheel drive so yeah uh, no problem there there was quite a bit of uh, understeer uh, as you can see I, I overshot the one of the tight corners by like a lot well but uh, <laughs> I mean I'm not uh, that great driver anyway so but yeah the oversteer was present and but the brake fading wasn't there which uh, uh, well that's great so overall the car really handled well I think so yeah the next one it will be the small island alright so <laughs> this is the long track around the small <laughs> small island uh, so let's see how the car does now I, I won't talk again because this will be probably much harder than uh, just racing around the race track that I already am fam familiar with so yeah let's give it a go <laughs> Oh. 
I didn't expect this one. Yeah, let's try it again. Okay, <laughs> well it was quite hard actually, but the car handled quite a bit better than I actually expected. The well the main main difference that the actually setting up the car properly for the rock like this would make is that the suspension just was so soft. The car was just bumping around like a well, you <laughs> have seen that. And also yeah, the car actually <laughs> didn't didn't felt that slow anymore, did that did it? Like uh, I wasn't even uh, full throttle, uh, full throttle, uh, full throttle throughout the race. So yeah, I must, I must see, I must say that the the result is better than I expected, and uh, and le <laughs> let's see what uh, what can I do with the car for the future video when I turn it into a more sports car or a GT car. Now, if you have any <laughs> questions or suggestions or just whatever, just uh, of course don't hesitate and write in the comments and I'll see you next time. So see ya.